Hi, my name is Ellen Ogden, and I run USAID's Global Polio Eradication Program, but I've been an immunization advocate since 1980s. I have been running USAID's Global Program since 1997, and have seen it from the inside out. We make sure every child gets vaccinated, even in the most remote areas, the nomads, the pastoralists, the cross-border kids, the newborns. We also support the surveillance system. So disease detectives that are going out to look for cases of paralysis, collect samples from those, and send it to an accredited laboratory. We make sure the labs have the reagents and all the equipment that they need. We also know that it takes some convincing. So we fund communication and advocacy, community engagement, and work with civil societies to make sure that people trust the vaccine, trust the vaccinators, and we can increase coverage and stop polio. So in our many years of working on polio eradication, we've learned a lot. We've learned how to reach children. And that means better planning and mapping and the use of global imaging to make sure that we don't miss any settlements or any children. We work with frontline workers to make sure they have the confidence to go to a family that may refuse vaccination and know what to say that will convince them. Our surveillance systems have worked with key informants and community-based informants to identify cases of polio and other diseases. We have used all of these systems as we have tried to introduce and roll out the COVID-19 vaccines. We built on our polio investments to make sure that the cold chain is there, the vaccine gets to the right place at the right temperature, that health workers know the right age group and who's most vulnerable. We make sure that they are trained in how to communicate why is getting vaccinated with COVID or other vaccines important. And if they hear about cases in the community, try not to stigmatize them and making sure that they seek care appropriately. We are building these lessons into our investments in polio, in COVID, as well as in global health security and zoonotic diseases, and we're prepared to do it for any pandemic threat. And these are the investments that you make when you click here. Gender dynamics are very, very important in immunization as well as other health services. We've known for quite a while that mothers are usually the caretakers in the family, but to leave their children, their families, cooking the meal, to walk, five kilometers, 10 kilometers or more to get their children vaccinated is often a very difficult thing. Husbands, fathers don't always want their wives to be gone with the children. The wives may get there and there's no vaccine available. It's a tremendous opportunity cost, time and money, um, vulnerability to the family. There are other decisions, internal decisions within the household. As many of you are aware, you don't always agree. Your father-in-law, your mother-in-law may decide that the children should not be immunized. And so even though you may want to do it, you have to deal with those internal dynamics. That's at the household and caregiver level. If you're a frontline worker and you're female, you have additional challenges especially if you're doing outreach campaigns or you have to travel overnight to a clinic. There often are not places to sleep, there are not separate bathrooms, and personal security becomes a problem. And many husbands or fathers don't want their female frontline workers to go out and do that kind of work. From an international level and a global program level, there are not many women in senior leadership positions in immunization in any of the immunization programs that are currently active. And that's true at the global level as well as the country level. We need to work harder to make sure that women move up 
and are promoted into middle management, into senior decision making, that their perspectives, the female perspective, gets built into the programming and micro plans and decisions. Too often, it's driven by a medicalized approach, and we need to humanize it and understand what women are dealing with. And to do that successfully needs women at decision making levels. Eradicating polio is an incredibly complicated um, effort. And we've done the easy work. And we've done the hard work. And now we have to do the very, very hard work. And part of that is the self-realization that we don't know all the answers. That we need to work with local communities and people that may be opposed to polio. There are non-state actors. So the bad guys that are out there opposing uh, countries, opposing health workers, opposing vaccination, we need to find ways to connect with them and communicate with them to allow access into communities that have been uh, closed off from vaccines in the past. One way of doing that is to offer more than just polio drops. Communities are desperate for food, fuel, other health services, maternal health services, other child health services. We know malnutrition is very high, children are stunted. And if you can't eat and your immune system is threatened, the polio drops and other vaccines don't work as well. We have a real opportunity to provide an integrated approach to these very desperate communities that need help. And I really believe that if we can offer more than just polio and bring a limited number of very strategic other activities, services, commodities to these groups, we will gain access and doors will open. One thing I've learned in polio is that you're constantly learning. We gather data. There is a lot of monitoring that happens in the program. There's pre-campaign planning. There's intra-campaign planning. There's post-campaign planning. There's lot quality assurance sampling, which is a way to verify who's performing, who's not performing. It's good enough to know if we have to go back in and repeat vaccination in an area with low performance. By constantly learning, by talking to people, by listening to people, you will find the clues to solving these really difficult barriers. It means we have to talk to people we may not have talked to before. It means reaching out and working with networks of people we may not have worked with before. We're dealing now with social media and and ways of communicating that we did not need at the very beginning of polio eradication. So adapting, learning, and listening are going to be the keys to success. My basic message is vaccine good, disease bad. We want available vaccines, polio, childhood vaccines, life course vaccines, to be available equitably to everybody that needs it, that deserves it, it's a basic right. And we as a global community can make that happen.